Butler. Guten Tag. We have used some built-in functions already, like the zeros function, but now we want to explore them in more detail. First, we'll look at a broad overview of functions, then in a later video, we'll discuss a few specific functions. MATLAB has thousands of built-in functions. A large set comes with the standard software. Other specialty functions come with specialty packages. This is a very rough guess, but I have personally used maybe 2% of all built-in functions available in MATLAB. Why such a low number? Because most functions have very specific jobs, and I have never encountered a need for those jobs. For instance, there is an entire MATLAB toolbox dedicated to mapping. Since I'm not employed in cartography or GIS, I have no use for those tools, but other people certainly do. Some functions are very commonly used, and you will become familiar with them. Here's a short list of some examples to demonstrate the variety of operations that you can carry out. The max command identifies the largest value in a list. Cos d computes the cosine of an angle given in degrees. Seal, short for ceiling, rounds up the input values. And zeros creates a matrix of all zeros. I hope you see that MATLAB does not just do math computations. These common functions are useful, but sometimes you need to accomplish a task that you haven't seen before. What do you do in that situation? The best resource I know of is an internet search. Let's look at an example. Say I want to add up all the numbers in a vector to get a total. Let's perform a search for MATLAB total using this mysterious internet search tool. Looking at the second link, I am taken to a forum where a user asks a question and others reply with answers. This can be very helpful if you have a similar question. However, more often, it is better to go straight to the source. MathWorks, the parent company of MATLAB, has a fantastic website. The first link in my search will take me there and specifically to a page describing the sum function. Up top, I see the variety of syntaxes I can use to apply the function in different ways. Scrolling down, I see a description and examples of all these syntaxes. Further down are detailed definitions of input and output arguments. And at the bottom, in the see also section, I find links to related functions that may be useful. This is a great deal of information and can feel overwhelming, but with a little bit of close reading, you can solve many problems. Note that all built-in functions use all lowercase letters. Also, we do have the ability to write our own user-defined functions. We'll explore this in detail later in the course. Syntax just means the structure or the ordering of symbols. With most functions, we can use the same function call or the same name but use a different number of inputs or outputs to obtain different results. For example, the round command has five possible syntaxes listed here. To demonstrate two of these, we have an example starting with vector f defined as shown. When I call the function as g equals round f, we see that each element is rounded to the nearest integer. When I call the function as h equals round f comma one, we see that each element has been rounded to one decimal place. The nuances are endless. When in doubt about how to use a function, look up the official documentation. Another example, here we see z defined as this two by three matrix. When we enter sum z comma one, we get this resulting vector. When we enter sum z comma two, we get this resulting vector. What does the second field in the sum call do? Pause the video and try to figure it out. A bit of quick research tells us that the second field indicates which dimension to perform the sum across, either rows or columns. The example provided illustrates this further. Now, looking at the slide example, we can see that one plus four equals five, two plus five equals seven, and three plus six equals nine. But if I request the sum across the columns by placing a two as the dimension, we compute one plus two plus three equals six, and four plus five plus six equals 15. 
Usually, we will use a single function in one command, but sometimes it is convenient to use multiple functions together. Why use two steps when you can use one? Nesting functions means placing one function call inside of another. When this is done, the function in the innermost parentheses gets evaluated first. As an example, let's combine two basic functions. Round rounds each element to the nearest integer, and SQRT computes the square root of each element. Written in this first way, square root is performed first, and then the results are rounded afterward. For example, the square root of 6.5 is about 2.55. This number is then rounded up to 3. Written in the second way, we round first and square root later. So the 6.5 is rounded to 7, then the square root of 7 yields 2.6458 approximately. These examples only demonstrate nesting with two functions, but you can apply the same idea with 3, 4, or any number of functions. Keep in mind, however, that the more complicated each command becomes, the easier it is to make a mistake.